Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I want to give you an overview of Module 3, Waves and Thermodynamics, which is part of the New South Wales Physics Preliminary Course here in New South Wales, Australia. Now, before we start, please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Now, this topic is divided up into five key inquiry questions, four of which relate directly to waves, and the last one on thermodynamics. The first one states, what are the properties of all waves and wave motion? In essence, about wave properties. The second inquiry question really is about behavior, and it asks the question, how do waves behave? The third and fourth inquiry question looks specifically at two types of waves. The third deals specifically with sound, and the inquiry question that's asked is, what evidence suggests that sound is a mechanical wave? I'm simply going to put here the idea of sound. The fourth inquiry question now looks at electromagnetic radiation, or specifically, we're going to be looking at light. And the question in this case is, what properties can be demonstrated by the ray model of light? And so again, I'm just going to use the word light. And our final inquiry question is an extension of the whole idea of waves, and we're particularly interested in waves in terms of infrared radiation. So we're looking at the topic of thermodynamics. And the question in this case asks how temperature, thermal energy, and particle motion related. So I'm just going to say thermodynamics. Now, when we look at wave properties, we're dealing really with three key areas. First is defining waves. Secondly, we're looking at examples of waves. And finally, we look at how we measure waves. Now, when we're talking about defining waves, we're simply stating that a wave is a traveling disturbance. Basically, it moves energy from one place to another by some form of vibration. And so that's basically the defining aspect out of the road. And then what we look at is the different types of waves that we get. Now, there are a variety of different types of waves that cause a propagation of energy through a vibration. But in the case of our New South Wales syllabus, we're really only looking at two of them. The first is the idea of a transverse wave. And so the particles are vibrating perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And then the other one is a longitudinal. And again, the particles in this case are also vibrating periodically, but they are now moving in the same plane or in the same line as the direction of the wave. And then what we do is we look at how we measure waves. Now, we measure waves in a number of ways. And really, we need to measure a wave in terms of its distance or uh, that it moves. And so now what we have here is the concept of its wavelength. Then we're interested in some sort of time period related with it. And so what we now have is the idea of the frequency and associated with that is also the period. And as a result, by its very nature, wave therefore, because it has a certain distance with respect to time, it has a velocity associated with it. And so those two here will allow us to have a velocity. And that velocity is simply related equal to F lambda. And finally, we have the concept of the height of the wave and we have the amplitude. And now what we look is at a general perspective of how waves interact. And we're looking at two key principles here. First, how do waves interact with matter? And secondly, how do they wa interact with other waves? Now, the waves, generally speaking, need a medium to travel through. In a moment, we will discuss the exception to the rule, which is electromagnetic radiation. When waves interact with matter, they can do one of two key things. They could actually be bouncing off. And so what we say is they have the concept of reflection, but they can also transmit through the material. And as long as that they arrive at that particular transition or change in the material at an angle that is not at its normal, it will also refract. Now, as a result, the wavelength and speed alters as a result of it refracting. But what happens if waves interact with other waves? Well, here we have the principle of superposition. And in essence, the word itself tells you what's happening is the two waves are on top of each other. They are super 
positioning. Now those waves are by nature moving and so the results what you get is actually a result of the two waves interacting with each other. Now the waves can be traveling in the same direction, they can be traveling in opposite directions, they can have different amplitudes, frequencies and wavelengths and the what you get as a result of the two types of waves adding up is known as superposition and that leads us to the concept of the idea of interference. And so the waves might actually interact to add up or constructively interfere or they may actually cancel out at any particular point so they destructively interfere. And then we have an example of a wave adding up in, an, in a situation that has already got a vibration occurring and we have the idea of resonance. And in essence, resonance is basically where you are forcing a vibration on something that is already vibrating with its own natural frequency. But your condition that you're applying here is that the frequency of the applied wave that you're doing is exactly the same as the natural frequency of the material that is vibrating. Now, in all of these things, I'll remind you, I have detailed videos that discuss all these particular concepts at much greater depth. So I encourage you to check it out. We now move on to two key examples of a wave, one being a mechanical wave and one being an electromagnetic wave. And in this case, we're looking at light. And so we're looking at further elaboration of these particular concepts we've just discussed. And the first of which is going to be looking at sound. Now, where we're looking at sound, we're looking at the behavior of sound as an example of a longitudinal wave. So what we have is understanding its behavior and now what we look at is examples of what we've discussed before in specifically in the terms of sound. And the first example that you might discuss is again this idea of interference. So I'm just going to draw a dotted line here. One aspect is looking at sound as interfering. So you could set up two speakers for example and find there are positions in front of the two speakers where the two sounds cancel out so you get destructive interference. An associated example of interference, but this specifically with sound, is the concept of beats. And there where you have two sounds that are only marginally different in their terms of their frequency, they will as a result have this beat frequency that is the difference of the two frequencies that you are playing. We then discuss another key concept and that is the concept of the Doppler effect. Now the Doppler effect is a result of a source of sound, in this case, let's say a speaker, is moving towards an observer. And as a result, the frequency that it may be emitting may be perceived by the observer differently because of the speaker moving relative to the observer. And then we also look at the concept of intensity. Most of you will probably realize that if you have a sound playing and you move further away from a particular source of sound, the intensity how loud it appears or how loud it sounds will obviously diminish. And there is a mathematical relationship that we look here, which is the inverse square law. So that wraps up our understanding of mechanical waves in terms of sound. And now what we look at is light. In this case, we're looking at as an example of electromagnetic radiation, where it is a form of a wave, in this case, an alternating electric field and a magnetic field. This is explored further in the HSC course. And we're using light as an example of how they behave through either interacting with other waves or with matter. And now we're specifically interested in three key phenomena. The first is the concept of reflection. We'll also look at the concept of refraction. And lastly, we'll look at the inverse square law again. Now when we're dealing with reflection, we are specifically interested in how light interacts, first of all, with totally smooth surfaces and not smooth surfaces or rough surfaces. And we have the difference between what we refer to as specular and diffuse reflection. But then when we look at smooth surfaces, we're particularly interested in the concept of mirrors and how light behaves when it interacts mirrors that are maybe different in shape. So we have the standard plane mirror, the one that you see yourself in the morning every day. But then of course, we also have the concept of mirrors that can be curved. They could be curved outwards. We call this a convex mirror or they could be curved inwards. And so we call this a concave mirror. And you need to be familiar with how light rays behave in these three different scenarios. We then move on to the concept of refraction. And now we're looking at a mathematical model that enables us to understand or predict how light bends as it moves from one medium to the other. When I 
discuss these particular concepts. I have detailed videos that discuss these things. But here we're looking at Snell's law, which looks at the mathematical relationship between the speed of light outside the first medium to the second medium and related also to the angles of the incoming ray or the incident ray with the refracted ray. An extension to the concept of refraction is also the idea of total internal reflection. That is actually an extension of the concept of refraction. And then finally, to round up our whole discussion of the wave section of our topic here is the inverse square law. Again, the intensity, which is the amount of power per square meter that you receive is proportional to one over the distance squared that you are getting that energy from. In this case, we're dealing with light energy. And so you need to be familiar with the mathematical relationships that are associated with all of this. We now get to thermodynamics. Well, the thermodynamics component is sort of an extra add-on to the whole concept of waves. Hence, I've cleared my board here just to discuss thermodynamics. In essence, the topic of thermodynamics can be divided into two key areas. And the first is looking at the concept of the definitions. And then we're dealing specifically with the applications. Now, when we're dealing with thermodynamics in terms of the de definitions, the module here only captures a very small section of the whole course of thermodynamics. So if you go to your local physics store, you, <laughs> you'll find that there are books that are dedicated just to the topic of thermodynamics. We're only taking a small snippet here. Now, there's two key concepts. The first concept is the concept of heat, which is the transfer of energy from one medium to the other. And specifically, we're dealing here with thermal energy. Then we are interested in the concept of equilibrium. And that is, the idea is that when energy transfers, there's a point at which that energy stops. And that is when basically two substances are what we call in thermal equilibrium. Now, related to the concept of heat then becomes the concept of the idea of temperature. But really, the way we want to discuss this is dividing this concept into two areas. The first is the concept of looking at it, the energy in terms of its kinetic energy. And that is the idea of temperature. Temperature is actually a measure of the average kinetic energy of any particular particle or molecule that is within a particular medium. But then we also have the concept of the idea of potential energy, which is about the, about, a, about the thermal energy within the molecules themselves. And that leads us to the idea of change of state. So what we're saying here is, is if you put energy into a medium, let's say thermal energy, you can change its kinetic energy, which alters its temperature, or you can affect its potential energy, which results in a change of state. And that continues as until we get to a point of the concept of thermal equilibrium. That is, if you have two substances side by side, if they are of different temperatures, there will be heat moving from one to the other until such time that they are in thermal equilibrium. That is that they have the same temperature. But then what we want to really do, because I've already alluded to the whole concept of thermodynamics, because it's about energy that is moving, we're looking at applications. And the first thing is to understand three key words, the idea of conduction, convection, and radiation. We ask ourselves, how does energy move or thermal energy move from one place to the other? Now, if two substances are in contact with each other, we have conduction. But we can also have in the cases of gases and liquids where the energy is moved by those particles themselves moving and the concept of convection comes into play. And then we have thermal energy that does not need a medium at all for it to move from A to B. And so we have the idea of radiation. And so basically we have the idea of thermal energy radiating in the form of electromagnetic radiation. But related to this concept over here is the idea of thermal conductivity. In other words, there are certain properties that will determine the rate at which that energy moves from A to B. Now, the classic example is holding, let's say, a metal box in one hand and a book in the other. And one would argue that they are different temperatures when in fact they are the same temperature. But what is happening is the metal box has a higher thermal conductivity. So more energy from your hand leaves into the metal box 
more quickly, in essence, and as a result, it feels colder. Whereas the paper in the book has a low thermal conductivity, and so therefore the rate of energy from your hand into the book is considerably slower, and it doesn't feel as cold. And then we move into the concept of the idea of heat capacity and latent heat. So when we're dealing with heat capacity, we're looking at the mathematical relationship of how energy going into a substance alters its temperature or its kinetic energy. And so therefore substances that have a low heat capacity will have a much greater increase in temperature for a smaller amount of energy that's transferred into it. Other substances, and water is a good example, basically has a high heat capacity. That is, you put a lot of energy into it, but its increase in temperature isn't as great. And then we have the idea of what we call latent heat. And latent heat really is talking about what happens when we have a change of state. How much energy do you need to put into the system in order for it to change state or take energy out of it? So we have the latent heat of fusion, which is all about the energy add from going from a solid to a liquid and vice versa, or the latent heat of vaporization where we're dealing with the changes of state from a liquid to a gas and vice versa. Again, we're changing in this case, we're talking at the energy in changing in terms of its potential central energy, whereas our heat capacity is all about changing its temperature, so we're dealing here with kinetic energy. So that summarizes the concept of thermodynamics. I hope that has been helpful for you in understanding module three. Please like, share, and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you, and please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.